Mama? This movie goes into the Hall of Fame of terrible movies. F this, sh this movie. I'm out. Holy smokes. Do we have a case of so bad it's good here? Not the highest rated movie of the year, I presume. One would think P, P, me would learn. But t t there is better if you like horror. <laughs> 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 kind of corny with her wishes. Really not scary at all. Wish Upon in the My Cone is the worst horror movie ever made. <laughs> Roger Ebert, I think, is an idiot because he gave this movie a one quarter percent for his review. I think he's getting too old to review movies as a regular movie watcher. I almost did not go to see Wish Upon based on Roger Ebert period. I'm glad I saw it. These people, oh frick, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we looked into the multiverse. Wait, you dig on multiverses? We made a wish for a new spotlight episode and we got one. Rich, what? do you dig on the multiverse? No. But much like the, the tale of the monkey's paw, our wish was corrupted, and we watched Wish Upon. How, how long has it been? Since the movie came out, you, we talked about it on a catch-up video, whatever yeah. year that was. Yes, 2013, I, I 2014. Think I watched it. And, yeah. And then I, I'm like, this is something else. And then we brought it to movie night here at the studio. We watched it, and then I think we've watched it probably four or five times <laughs> randomly. <laughs> and it and it has the the appeal of like like a famous B movie, like A Room or, you know, it whatever. Has, well, it has those memorable moments. It has memorable it's not, moments. It's not always laugh out loud funny, no. but it's always bad. It, it, it yeah, uh, uh, the, the B movie formula, it has to keep refreshing itself. Yeah, those are the, those are the best B movies. Yes, yeah. and, and Rich has never seen this, and so we figured, uh, heck, now's the time. Why not? <laughs> Why not bring Rich Evans into the world of Wish Upon? Why would you be all apprehensive if everything was relatively normal? <laughs> Can't you hear the music? <laughs> oh, shit, it's just here with the music. Well, Rich is a slut for wontons, so this movie's right up his alley. <laughs> She's a slut for wontons. Oh. And he does dig on the multiverse. <laughs> uh, like, nobody digs on the multiverse anymore. Hold on, you dig on multiverse? <laughs> Maybe. Literally everybody in the world is sick of multiverses. You know what, you know what this is? I, I can pinpoint it. This is this is advanced tier B movie watching. This is like <laughs> like the AP of of B movies, right? You mean a more discerning eye? <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, it's it, it's advanced. Yeah. It's like advanced calculus of B movies, <laughs> where you a normal person would watch this and go, "This is like just lame." Yeah. The hate is gonna hate. There's not much you can do about it. But if you have a fine-tuned bullshit detector. And, and, and knowledge of, of how a movie is constructed and how, uh, how, how certain things are put together. You can watch this and go, oh, you know, I know what you're doing. It's like a fine wine <laughs> of, of bad B movies. Yeah. And uh, that's the challenge today. Wish upon. Okay. <laughs> no, Claire. Yeah, do it. What's so funny? Winner? Yeah, what's funny? is like your smegma. Oh. But like, ultimate smegma. <laughs> oh, snap! <laughs> I, I, the, 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 the basic premise is a girl's garbage picking father uh, finds a, 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 an evil Chinese wish granting box that purely by coincidence, uh, her mother who committed suicide also owned. Which we see in the first before. 10 seconds of the movie. And then later in the movie, it's treated as if it should be a shocking reveal, even though they already explained it. I guess it is to the daughter, but to us, we already knew about it from frame one. Well, they, don't, they don't show what the mother throws out. What the f*** else would it no, be? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the mother wraps it up. 
It's in a specific type of paper wrapped a specific way, and we see her put that in the garbage can. So the mom wrapped it at some point in the six, seven years after the mom committed suicide as the result of her trauma from the Chinese magic wish upon box. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry O'Connell had it, and then he died, and it got thrown out because his house was on fire, and then the dad found it, and then wrapped it to look exactly like the mom had wrapped it years earlier, unrelated. And nobody ever moved the bike. <laughs> That's the important part, yes. yeah. That amazing establishing shot of the house. <sighs> <laughs> Still there. I haven't touched the bike in eight years. <laughs> well, okay. I want to get into all the juicy bits of this plot. But first, I want to talk about uh, the, the production of this. I, I did a little bit of research into this film because I said, who made this? Is it a young and upcoming filmmaker who wants to get started in horror movies? Is it an auteur, a writer, whose dream was to retell the ancient tale of the monkey's paw in a modern twist? For a hip young audience that digs the multiverse. Wait, you dig on multiverses? I would argue to say no one cared at all about the making of this film. Because the director is like usually a cinematographer, right? This director, his name is John Leonetti, right? Um, he directed Annabelle, mainly a director of photography. Um, tons of stuff, right? He directed Annabelle, and his first feature film was Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So here's the interesting thing. And the writer is a lady named Barbara Marshall, uh, who wrote such hit films as... Buying Back My Daughter, Soccer Mom Madam, The Chris Watts TV Movie. <laughs> oh, God! Wow. Uh, the, the film ultimately received a 19% critic score and a 31% Rotten Tomatoes uh, user score. So there's the screenwriter. Uh, just a, a paycheck kind of thing. I'm going to write this. Write a horror film. I'm going to slap together this horror movie. And then John Leonetti's the director, a DP uh, who turned director. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an older guy, too. So he was born in 56, right? Okay. Now, there is also, I don't know if you're familiar with the name Leonetti in terms of directors of photography, yeah. there's, there's an older Leonetti, Matthew, who did, and I know this name because he, he was the DP on a lot of Star Trek movies. Oh. Um, so he was born in 41. So I thought, is this a father? It could be a father's son. Maybe they're brothers? Or is it a coincidence? <laughs> the coincidence there that I've discovered in my research, Matthew Leonetti, the elder of the two directors of photography, uh, was the DP on the original Butterfly Effect movie. Oh, the Ashton Kutcher classic. And amongst the credits of John Leonetti, the younger but still old, Director of photography, he also did the Butterfly Effect 2. Mm. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking they're probably brothers because... What if this is a weird multiverse situation where they're the same person that somehow ended up in the same timeline? I do dig on the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, it can't be a coincidence that their last names are Leonetti, they're both DPs, and they both worked on Butterfly Effect films, ironically, <laughs> Butterfly Effect, which... Maybe something happened I mean, with the multiverse. That's maybe my somebody made a wish that went wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm trying to find, and then we have the mystery of Jerry O'Connell's appearance. In this <laughs> That's the weird, I, we've seen this movie like 20 times. Every I, time we Every forget. time I forget that Jerry O'Connell shows up because it's just a quick cameo. He doesn't have any lines. He screams a bit. He's the previous owner of the Wish Upon box that uh, he, after his last wish, that's the whole thing with the rules of the, the box, is that it consumes your soul. So after his last wish, his house burns down and he dies in it. And that's his scene. Uh, it, yeah, it almost seems like another movie, like, a, like that was like the previous film. Like this like is a, a flashback sequel. to Wish Upon 1, exactly. and this is Wish yeah. Upon 2, yeah. Um, and he's uncredited in the film. And then I looked through the credits uh, to see if Jerry O'Connell was perhaps a producer 
like you know had some had something to do with the movie. Some some you're looking for some logical reason. I even why <laughs> Jerry O'Connell would be in this. I even went to the director's uh, previous films to see if I could find a Jerry O'Connell film. You maybe did this as a favor for him, or I need I need a guy. Did this guy direct Kangaroo Jack? You can talk. And I can sing. I said a hip hop, the hippie, the hippie to the hip hip hop, and you don't stop. Or they're just neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I know about Jerry O'Connell is that he is the current host of Pictionary. Huh. Oh. No, <laughs> that's all you it's, know about him. It's on the TV. It's like for some reason, every time I go into the dentist office, it's playing on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry O'Connell hosting Pictionary. Well, you know what? Good for him. It's a steady gig. A steady he can gig. ride that out for the next 30 he's, years. He's a voice on uh, Star Trek Lower Decks. Oh, is he? Yeah. Mm. Okay. I think he's the, uh, the first officer. Huh. I mean, it could be like you always speculate that they filmed this December 30th and he needed to. <laughs> <laughs> he needed that SAG insurance. He didn't have that Pictionary money coming in yet. So. <laughs> yes, he needed this to keep a SAG insurance or a tax write off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a workmanlike product. It's it's a product. Yes, yes. These are these are the these are the people that work in the in the coal mine. <laughs> uh, uh, you know the 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 metaphorical coal mine of Hollywood. They're yeah. just churning out the product. A very cynical product too, because it's very clearly it was released in theaters. We watched the unrated version, thankfully, but mm -hmm. it was a PG thirteen horror film uh, aimed at a younger audience and their attempts to appeal to teenagers, the dialogue, the oh, music yeah. choices are all so bad. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the, I don't know how old the writer is um, or how old she was when she wrote this, but yes, I, I, someone I don't uh, speculate is in tune with 16-year-olds, uh, clearly by the writing. Same with the director, too. Yeah. Your Direct dad is hot sauce. Like sriracha hot sauce. Yes. Um, lots of lots of horrible lines. You're a, bo a bowl of sticky bitch sauce. <laughs> There's some sauce related comments. I think you're a selfish bowl of bitch sauce. Your dad is like serious hot sauce. Like sriracha hot. It's not like like a 39 year old writing for teenagers. This is more like a 67 year old <laughs> writing for teenagers. <laughs> What is it? They, they got that. The, the, they're, they're going around once the, the one girl gets like the wish for her face to start rotting. Um, we're starting a GoFundMe. <gasps> they're going around. They're collecting money. They have, they have a, a GoFundMe. Yeah. And they're just pa literally they're passing around a hat to get money. That's their GoFundMe. And that's where like did the director or did the writer just hear that and think that was slang? Like it's not an actual <laughs> website. Go fund this. She's asking like her 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 thirty eight year old daughter. <laughs> How do kids nowadays do, do the raising of money for funds? Do they do like a bake sale? <laughs> no, no, no. They do a GoFundMe, ma. Sorry, I'm 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 feeding my baby, your granddaughter. <laughs> they do a GoFundMe. Okay, okay. So that they walk around with a little wicker basket, like yeah. a collection plate at church. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? No, 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 no. My baby's crying, mom. I don't have time for this. Go fund this. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> Recycle first. <laughs> Why not throw it at her if you want to be a dick? Hey, Claire. I liked your banner. Yeah, I liked it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fine. You just got to wipe it off. <laughs> it's a vinyl banner. <laughs> it's hilarious. And, th and their attempts to show uh, teenagers' obsession with social media is oh, laughable. Uh -huh. We don't have Instagram. They couldn't get the rights to Instagram, so they use pic pics of posts. Pics of posts. Post a pics, something like that. Yeah, and there's a, at least one close up of her texting. And it looks almost like they designed the graphic for a phone that was narrower, but then when they put it on the phone, it didn't fit right. Yeah, yeah, so they yeah. stretched it. Like all the, uh, the lettering is like stretched. Yeah. It's really bizarre looking. <laughs> We're drinking mimosas and eating cupcakes. What's, what's better than that? <laughs> Look at all those bags that are empty. <laughs> and here we go. And say, wish upon. Wish upon. I think the most damning thing to me is just the sheer lack of creativity. You you have a you have a a, a premise. 
with like Freddy Krueger levels of potential. You make a wish, like the, that's the, easy, the easiest thing in the world is monkey paw and something goes wrong and you can do creative things with it. Like I remember uh, like a monkey paw adaptation, like something from the like 70s, really old, like somebody wished, uh, they were at a funeral, I wish so-and-so would come back to life and they come back to life but they got like the formaldehyde in their veins and they're just like oh. screaming in terror and they can't die. Okay. It was like horrible and nightmarish and it used the premise of a wish gone wrong cleverly. Mm. And this, she just makes a wish. Well, that's like a, a wish master from the 90s. That's the same thing. Yeah. The evil genie man. Yeah. You're confusing two things. You're confusing the monkey's paw and the genie's wish. Mm -hmm. The genie's wish is be careful what you wish for, you know? Yeah. I wish I had all the money in the world. Cut to all the money in the world just falls on you and crushes you. Yeah. That's the genie's wish. The The story of the monkey paw was the, uh, the guy wished for money. He got the money, but as the result of getting the money, his son was killed in a horrible accident at work. Mm -hmm. So it's different. They're not generally related. It's just, it's it's a, you know, a bad exchange. You know, if you wish, wished for like a new car, right? Uh, you got a brand new Mercedes, right? Then uh, Nanu would fall down the stairs and break her neck. That's your result. Or you're backing out of the driveway and accidentally run over her with the new car. Well, I think that's that's. Would that be more of a, that's more of a wish master wish. thing? The either way, wish either one works spot. better than uh, I wish to be popular in school. Oh no, man slipped in bathtub and broke his head. <laughs> <laughs> Really hammer it home there. <laughs> Let me keep trying. We need to like slip and fall and the bats <laughs> falls over. Let's turn it into like a naked gun scene. <laughs> the wish has been granted. And then the problem is, is that um, as you get more wishes, you become more and more corrupted because you become more desensitized to the fact that you're harming others. Yeah. Jesus, Claire, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm sorry, but... What? How is there a but? People are dead. It was just nice to be normal for a while. That's your excuse? What'd you wish for anyway? That nice house? No. I know, and I said I was sorry. I, I didn't know that any of this would happen. You know what I wish? <laughs> I wish I never met you. That's what I wish. Oh, snap. It starts to ensnare you, like you get seven more, six more. Which five is not more. portrayed very well in this. It's, it's, it's there. It doesn't happen until like the very end. Most of the movie, she's oblivious to any of this. Because the movie has to be 90 minutes, and you have to, <laughs> the, first, the first death is her dog, mm -hmm. because her first wish is what? Uh, her first wish is, oh, that's when she wants the popular girl to rot. Yes. I wish that Darcy Chapman just, I don't know, but just like go rot. Which leads to them posting Instagram photos of her face rotting off. Instantly, he just pulls out the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Darcy, Darcy! Oh, oh, ah, <gasps> oh <my> God! <laughs> <laughs> She posts that on Pixta Post. It ended up, now it's going viral. Literally. No. Oh, she's rotting. Yeah. Joey King wishes for that, and then the next day, uh, she hears her dog it's, under it's, the porch. The dog's been killed, but it looks like the dog was killed by rats. So right. it's, she See, thinks it's unrelated. The script is, is stupid. Well, there's some cute, confusing timeline issues with the movie, because mm -hmm. the first wish, she wishes that her uh, rival, her high school bitchy uh, girl, blonde girl, would rot, and it happens immediately. And then the next day, her dog dies. But then there's other ones, like the, uh, I don't remember what her second wish is, but that's what leads to the old man dying in the bathtub. That's the inheritance one. Oh yeah, I wish that, that we, uh, I wish that my uncle, who I guess died off camera, would give us all of his inheritance. No, uncle died in the bathtub. If there's a will, trust me, we ain't in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's wish too. Okay, yeah. So she wishes that for their inheritance. He dies in the bathtub. They move into his house immediately. 
Um, so these are things that happen immediately, but then there's other ones where it seems like it takes months for the effect of the wish to, to happen. Well, maybe not months. <laughs> well, months! You get an inheritance, and that's not like an instant thing where the guy dies and the next day you're just living in the mansion, right? There's gotta be like like paperwork involved, you wait for <laughs> readings to the will, and it takes like, it takes like five weeks for the death for that wish to kick oh, in. God. Call the girls. <laughs> That's a charcuterie. <laughs> oh, they shop at a fake store. That's right. <laughs> they don't go to like a mall because they didn't want to film in one, so they they, they film in the it's director's just a room. basement. <laughs> it's a store that's so exclusive, it's not open to the public. It's called Hayward. Oh, is that supposed to be a store? Yes. Yeah. But it's so exclusive, it's in the director's basement. <laughs> Her dad stole garbage picks. Yeah. That's the confusing part, yeah. They move into this giant mansion, gives her a credit card, they have nice new cars, nice new house, and he just can't stop rummaging through filth. Dad, we live in a freaking mansion. What else do you need? Claire. It's no, not no forget about it. Oh. It's not even explained. He says something like, I'm helping his friend. He's like, I'm helping him pick through... Like, just give your friend money so he doesn't have to dig through the garbage. Is, is that his job? <laughs> is that his literal job? Yeah, he, that, he digs out garbage and he sells it. That's how he makes all of his money? It's, is, or is it just like a hobby to him? I, I think the implication is that's how he deals with the trauma. He's searching for something. Okay. He's searching okay. for something that he's lost. Mm. I, I think it's a little supposed to be kind of metaphorical because he lost his wife yeah. when she hanged herself, Captain mm. Picard. And it also makes uh, Joey King embarrassed because her dad picks at the garbage dumpsters that are right across the street from the high school. Mm -hmm. Dumpster she... Daddy. They, they, they post dumpster. pictures of him on Pixa posts. <laughs> Hashtag Dumpster Daddy. Yes, yeah, she's she's like the r r yeah relentlessly teased by the popular kids at school, and that's that's how we're supposed to kind of relate to her. It's a classic tale. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, 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 so. I'm waiting. And she has nerdy friends that I guess are unpopular. Barb and her other friend. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, yeah, there's clearly the popular clique at high school. Uh, she's in love with the, the guy, the jock guy. Uh, she secretly fawns for him as they show in one shot. And that's one of her wishes. It's for him to fall hopelessly in love with her which for some reason takes months. Mm -mm. He starts looking at her immediately, but they don't like like hook up till they go to that party and they start making out. And that's like months later. Why do you keep saying months? Because it's months for all these things it to happen. It feels like the, the passage of time in this is very hard to judge for whatever reason. Things, have, things feel like they happen both immediately and also months later at the same time. Yeah. I think she just got, see, she got too greedy with her wishes and she wished that that guy would fall in love with her, right? But then she started to move on to other things. Mm -hmm. And and meanwhile, she he's like she's like great. He he's fallen in love with me, but I got some other stuff to deal with, but that just makes his love grow more and more obsessive. Mm -hmm. And then he starts stalking her by peeking in her window, taking pictures of her, which is, you know, a bad bad side of of being in, uh, in love or obsessed with someone. And, that's the unintended consequence. That's because she's so greedy with her wishes, the problems start compounding. <laughs> it's the most clever this movie got. It's yeah. the only time one of her I wishes mean, yeah. like negatively affected her directly. Yeah. I mean, obviously people are dying around her, but yeah, where I wish he'd fall in love with me and then he gets too obsessed and too creepy. Like they should all kind of be like that. That would be more fun. Yeah, instead of just, yeah, unrelated incidents where people die that she happens to know. There is, I wish my bully got face rot. Okay. There is, I wish for the inheritance. Uh, there is, I wish for for hot hunky boy to fall in love with me. I, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. Does Rich get this reference? No. 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 Of course he doesn't. It's a classic hip hop song. Oh. Too short? No, not too short. What's his name? Skilo. Skilo. I know Amish Paradise. Does that count? I need that box so I can wish that Rich wasn't so embarrassing. I'll see you around.
<laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> Very predictable. I wasn't predicting a flat comedy angle of her flying through the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta shoot that like better. <laughs> I mean, I don't, know, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> Just a couple quick chaotic, you know, that's when you brought, pull out the shaky cam. Oh shit, we don't know where she went. She got hit by a car. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah the way they did it was better. I mean, for our sake, for it our was sake, much better. It's funnier. But... It's a great ending. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, a lot of the death scenes play out almost like almost like they were shot for comedy. Because yeah. Cheryl and Fenn uh, has a garbage disposal, which they really hammer in early on. They keep showing her shoving things into that garbage disposal. And then, like, she, like, flings her hair into the sink like she's trying to get it caught. The fuck is up with this Just garbage disposal? I better get my hair in the way. I better look inside there. Even though. What if I put my hair in there and turn it on? <laughs> It's so poorly done. See, that's like, I, I saw a couple comments that say like, this is a, what, a rip off of Final Destination. That particular part feels like what a, an unclever Final Destination death would be. In Final Destination, they would build up that, that thing and then something else would happen, yeah. unrelated. And that's what it, it seemed over the top because she has the garbage disposal and the switch for the garbage disposal is where like your knee is. <laughs> Which is like, I don't know, that's, no one has a garbage disposal switch where a child could accidentally press it who's crawling around on the floor. Like, it's ridiculous. The wish changed reality, so that's where the switch was. Mm. Quit making excuses. <laughs> uh, the switch for the garbage disposal is always like nowhere near it. So you don't accidentally bump it while your hand's in there. And, and then, yeah, she's like, eh, and it's like so. You see her brush her hair into yeah. the sink. And she's got long hair, and she's re sticking her hand in there, and she's hitting the button. And it's, it's just like, yeah, you'd think then all of a sudden, like, like a car rams, in, rams into her house and kills <laughs> sure. her. Well, you, it's like, whoa, I wasn't expecting her that. Her gas oven explodes. Yeah. Unrelated. Yeah. 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 You're, you're setting up. And that also ties in with the, the horribly constructed scene where it's, a, it's uh, we know the wish box is going to take another person and we've set up Ryan Philippe Philippi Ryan Philippi is changing his tire dangerously oh, on a, yeah. on a cur curvy road at night and her friend is getting in a glass elevator going up to the 32nd floor to chase pokemon to chase to play a pokemon gotcha game <laughs> that's horribly botched that whole sequence is horribly oh, yeah. botched that's what i mean it's yeah. like it's like you were saying the way to do it is... Well, you, 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 like the whole bit is, you, oh, the way they film this is you don't know who is going to die, but they keep teasing on both of them. And that... that and then it's Barb. Yeah, yes. Oh, they, that yeah, could have need, been a thing. You sure. need the twist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess you could have teased both and then it's Barb. You didn't expect Barb at all. That would have worked really well. Sure. But you could have, I mean, even simpler than that, you could have just kept teasing on the dad and then the elevator girl is the one you don't expect because we haven't been focusing on that at all. She prayed for seven days and seven nights, and on the seventh night, a Yao Guai answered. That's Yao a Guai? demon. A demon of the Chinese persuasion. If you believe in that sort of thing. Because on the upper, or the in interior of the lid of the box, there's like a wood carving of a demon. They keep showing it. Yeah, yeah. So that's who's hiding inside the box. So that's the mystical part. But our hero, Joey King, takes in high school, in Ohio, takes a class on ancient Chinese. <laughs> She's apparently not learned much because she has to go to somebody else to translate. Yeah, she asks her teacher, and he's like, uh, I, I don't, don't know. fucking know. I'm only the teacher. <laughs> um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know more than this course offers. You have to go find a, a real expert. If you want an accurate translation, you'll probably have to talk to a scholar. Got it, thank you. Also, I'm Korean, you racist. <laughs> And her love interest, I don't forget his name. What's his name? I don't know. He's a hip, hip uh, Asian uh, Chinese man who, who rides has- a skateboard. He rides a skateboard. He's the real love interest. Yeah, yeah. Um, his cousin is a hip Chinese gal who lives in the Chinese building filled with Chinese people in Chinatown <laughs> in Akron, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And she has a hip Chinese door Chinese wallpaper, characters of Chinese on the wall. Just taped just onto the taped wall. Just taped on the wall. Anything Chinese they could find with Chinese characters. A giant that, bull statue with 
comically pointy horns. Uh, a bull statue, yes, with very sharp horns. Um, she has Chinese uh, rings, she has Chinese tattoos all over her body. She's a slut for wontons. She and has, she's a slut for wontons. She's a slut for wontons. She has Chinese dish soap, <laughs> Chinese, uh, Chinese cereal. That's fine. <laughs> she's, a, she's a tool in the script to give a partial translation of the box. Oh. I mean, it is dangerous to have a sharp bull statue <laughs> in the middle of your house. <laughs> they didn't even, like, try to build suspense for that one. It was supposed to shock you. Oh. It's supposed to be shocking. What's shocking is this low res stock footage. <laughs> Doesn't match the quality of the rest of the footage. <laughs> It's all they had of Cleveland. <laughs> Hi, Uncle August. No, no, I'll get the paper. Thank you, Claire. Who's the second one that I, was that actually the uncle? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't notice. Get off the road, winner. I'm trying to drive here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fell in garbage cans. <laughs> Okay, yeah. old man. and they weren't, they didn't quite get along because she was written out of the will. I forget why, did they explain why? No, um, they, they, there's a scene. She crashes her bike, she talks to the uncle, she comes home, and uh, Ryan Phillippe's on the, the porch with his friend drinking beers. Remember, mm -hmm. she, I had a terrible day, blah, blah, blah. And then she comes inside. This is before she trips on all the fire pokers. <laughs> yeah. Of course not. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. hey what? I'm gonna use those. What do you what do you need these for, huh? I think he says something like, you know, yeah, your uncle, he's he's super wealthy, but he doesn't like our family and he cut us all out of the will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then after they find that he's dead and she makes the wish, I want a million dollars or I wanna be rich, he gets the phone call. Yeah. Your uncle died, but it turns out you weren't cut out of the will. How much money did we get? And then he goes, all of it. Do, 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 do. We're going to Saks 57th Avenue. <laughs> We're going to J.C. Penny <laughs> in their their clearance department room in the basement. <laughs> We're going to the alley behind the J.C. Penny's to dig through their dumpster. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just hanging out with Carl, picking up some stuff. Dad, we live in a freaking mansion. <laughs> what else do you need? Claire. It's no, not no forget about it. Oh. Can't stop garbage picking. It's, he's like an addict. <laughs> <laughs> he's a slut for garbage. <laughs> you didn't see that. No, totally didn't see your dad digging through the trash at all. <laughs> Is that the result of a previous wish? No, that's just him. <laughs> he just can't help She's it. She's gonna try to change I him now. I wish that my dad would just, <laughs> just stop being so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> now he vanishes from the movie. <laughs> She's horribly unlikable. I, I hate her. <laughs> I'm just gonna cry. My, I killed my dog, my neighbor, my uncle. But nobody likes me anymore. My <laughs> and I'm cousin. sad. That's the worst part. My friend? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we should have a picture of her falling in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> she seems very slow. It takes her a very long time to realize what's happening. She's, she's a good girl who became corrupted by the box and the wishes. And in the end, she makes the right choice, tries to amend things, but ultimately she has to pay the price. So she's a tragic hero, a tragic downfall. You might not have liked her actions in the middle, but she was, she was addicted to the wishes. Claire, go away! I thought we were done with this! I'm not ready yet. You can't keep it, you know that, you have to get rid of it. You don't understand, I'm not ready yet! What about everything we talked about? I just won't wish anymore. 
Okay, it'll be fine. I just won't wish. I'm just gonna hang on to it for a while. Claire, please, you're not hearing yourself. You can't control it. It's controlling you. Go away. Okay, please go away. I have two wishes left, and if you do not go away, I will use one on you, and I swear I'll use it on you. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Is there an Oscar scene? Camera applause. You can't keep running from this! It's a cycle, Rich, and she's a very, that's a very complex heroine, if you ask me. It's a, it's, 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 uh, she's not even an anti-hero, she's just a fallen hero who's worthy of redemption. I think you're a selfish bowl of bitch sauce. He didn't get the movie. Dad, seriously, you can't get rid of anything! What would mom say, huh? She'd yeah. say... <laughs> <laughs>
they, 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 they were at, uh, oh. It's like a scavenger hunt. It's like a high school party scavenger hunt. Thing. Right, and they end, they, they're at a, like a, uh, an outdoor party where they're burning like an effigy of the rival high school team's mascot. It's mm -hmm. like, a, like a Viking or something. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> and then things get wild and then they end up in a giant hotel. And I don't know why. Because that's where, what they're looking for is somewhere in the hotel. Okay, uh, yes, and then she's like, oh wait. Uh, uh, Globnon, the, the demon is here. <laughs> or she's like, Glob, Globstor, Globstun, Globglorg 3189 is, is, is here. He's on the 26th floor. He's on the floor. 26th floor of this hotel. I gotta go get him, okay? Right. All right, where to next? Um, uh -oh. Holy balls. What? Malfour Molly is in the building, 26th floor. I gotta go. Are you kidding me? Uh, and it's like, what? <laughs> and then she's in the elevator. And then the elevator falls. Mm -hmm. And what, I think when an elevator just dead falls like that, you're, you would probably just fly up to the ceiling. But she's like standing like hitting buttons. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if the gravity works like that. This is a little silly. And then it smashes on the ground. So and that's they, where you do a thing where it's falling, it's falling. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, it stops. Uh, and yeah, she's safe. Yeah. Oh, she's safe. And then she gets off. Yeah. And then something unrelated happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, you've watched too many Final Destination Those films. Final Destination movies are so fucking good. But they, oh, they open the door. They open the, the, I genuinely like them. They're very funny. They're the, the best comedies you'll ever see. Uh, oh, everyone runs up, of course, when the, after the elevator's crashed. And the door opens, and it was a great opportunity for, like, something really horrific. Like, she's been cut in half. Or, oh, sure. But she's just laying there, and there's, like, a shard of glass in her. And we see the reflection. It's, very, of, it's a very uh, artistic shot. Joey King and Barb. And then the camera's on them, oh, yeah. and, and they're, Joey King's visibly upset, and so is Barb. She's like, no, 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 no. And she subconsciously fixes her hair. <gasps> she's crying, but she's fixing her hair. <laughs> Barb, we're rolling. <laughs> Mid take. Mid take. And it's while, just in the movie. While she's reacting to the to the, the mangled body of her dead friend. She was he she was in shock, Mike. She was in shock. Her brain didn't couldn't process what it was seeing. She was just going about her normal routine just for a bit. Yeah, okay. Hadn't sunk in yet. See, see, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, Top quality acting. You just didn't recognize it for I, okay, what it was. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. And I and I also then will 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 switch this over to Jay in his complaint about the bike. The bike, the day her mother died, that's where she dropped the bike. It was so traumatic. She never wanted to touch the bike, and I, I believe that. I was mean, I can understand like when when someone dies and like you never like touch their bedroom again. You don't update anything. Like that makes sense. But a bike in the yard, it's halfway in the street. It was you to show grass that. growing around it. You gotta move that thing. Pain in the ass to mow around that thing. Yeah, well, yeah. No one was mowing at all, anyways. <laughs> Someone has to mow. It's been years. There's garbage to be picked, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All the grass is dead because it's just been covered with like oil barrels and tires. The the bike served two purposes: to show that uh, the time had time had passed, the passage of time, and that. The event was so traumatic, they just didn't want to fucking touch that bike, and okay, it rotted. Okay. And that's that's kind of like how they dealt with the trauma by just, just like letting everything go. They just let everything go to shit, and the dad started uh, really getting into junk, the junk scene, the, the junk. He didn't become an alcoholic. No. He just started collecting old tires. See, that would have been more straight and narrow if if he just became like a really horrible, abusive alcoholic. Yeah. And instead of outside the school, um, he's picking junk out of a dumpster. You know, maybe he shows up for this at school drunk. Sure. Where's my daughter? Is this really taking her? You take her, her up from yeah, after school. You're embarrassing me, dad. You're yeah. drunk. Or, you know, he goes to the, shows up to the prom and, you know, and he's all drunk and, or, he, or her friends are over and he's drinking and he starts calling her names and, you know, something really like gross and real world and relatable. Mm -hmm. But instead, she just resents him and is horribly embarrassed by him because he picks rod iron spikes out of a dumpster. Yeah. And that, I think that says a lot about her character is that she isn't, uh, she's, a, she's awful because she should have loved her dad the way he is. Be, maybe he's an embarrassment to her. He's uh, not a bad guy from the beginning. Exactly. It's he's, weird. He's not a bad dad. He, he does his best, but he likes picking garbage, but she's selfish. 
Mm -hmm. She's embarrassed about that herself. So she wants to change him for her own self and make him a cool dad that plays a saxophone <laughs> with a jazz trio in their living room. How did we get her, this far without talking about the saxophone While her scene. teenage friends are getting hot under the collar, thinking <laughs> he's, he's hot like sriracha when he's playing that saxophone in their living room. Barb wants to jump his bones because he's playing that sax. she wished for him to be less embarrassing. <laughs> yes. They don't even like uh, properly establish the saxophone thing. It's not like he was a musician and he, and he kind of, you know, got away from it because he got too caught up in collecting junk. Yeah. Barb it's just, it's just like she wakes up one night and he's just playing the saxophone in the living room for no reason. Well, that's Wish Upon, the best movie I've ever seen in my whole life. Did we do it justice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mom? Mom? I missed you so much. <laughs> you missed me so much? <laughs> Happy birthday, UK! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, uh, people will be baffled by this spotlight um, because they're going to say, I've seen that movie and it's just boring. It's but a, yeah, generic studio horror movie. As we said in the start, this is advanced, <laughs> advanced level <laughs> appreciation of B movies because we talked about not only, uh, you know, the, the mechanics of the plot and weird choices and like lame teenage dialogue that's not accurate and uh, b bad ideas. We we're talking about the, 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 you know, the dad under the car and the girl in the elevator. What you could have done to fix all the different things. Um, uh, but there were laugh out loud moments because of poorly executed uh, kill scenes. But then also sound effects. Uh, oh yeah. Th there are numerous stock sound effects that Jay and I hear in in our nightmares. <gasps> <gasps> we didn't hear the the the, the pot break. The no, no break. pottery break. No, uh, there's a crowd gasp, but it's not the crowd gasp. Yes. <laughs> and then there's um, the. There is. A, there is. A, you were out of the room uh, when Joey King goes over to Sherilyn Fenn's house when she discovers her dead body. And there's no reason why she goes over there. She just does. Mrs. Deluca. Wait. No. <laughs> Wait. No, Wait. Nobody's found her in weeks. Wait. And we show, uh, it's on a shot of Sherilyn Fenn and you hear a scream and mid scream, it cuts back to Joey King, but she's not screaming. <gasps> wait, she clearly wasn't screaming when it cut back to her. Wait. Again with the stock screams. Wait, wait. <laughs> it's like a generic scream sound effect that they just threw in because they were like, we need to put something here. Right, right. It doesn't match at all. Well, the, there's squeaky door. Squeaky metal door, which is yes. We didn't hear. You don't hear the. Um, uh, it's always sunny. Half in the bag door open yeah, close. Yeah. That's a pretty pretty classic one. But the <gasps> there's a, there's a lady scream. The a gasp. Mm -hmm. <gasps> it's uh, that and the uh, the the crowd version of that is in every fucking movie trailer. <gasps> it's rare you see it in a movie. It's so in, blatant. It's in uh, Life Aquatic. Yeah, you hear it really blatantly. Yeah, uh, the crowd gasp. Yeah. Oh, crowd the, gasps and a lot of stuff. Oh, you're talking about the individual. The individual gasp. She she sees the man, the boyfriend char character spying on her, and then she goes, and you could have just left it like that. Yeah. Well, that's the same with the Sherilyn Fenn scene. It's like that's probably what they shot. That's why they didn't have her like ADR or anything. And then laid into editing, they're like, we need to spice this up. It's yeah, boring. Yes, that's your your answer was why didn't they just get a yeah. scream on set? You know. It, it, too, it, too late into post-production. Post-production. Yeah, they there. don't have it, and <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's. Uh, I think you can use sound effects, but you can't pull in a different actor and replace their voice. Mm. Like I don't think you could have a different actress scream for her. Okay. It's probably some kind of. I don't know for sure, but I'm just guessing. But mm. it's just easier just to do. <gasps> 
and just yeah. squeeze it in there and hope nobody notices, but certain people will. There, there is one in this that's jarring where she screams and we, we cut back to her like right after the scream and her mouth is still shut. Did you say that one? <laughs> that particular one, you said that? Will someone say something? And on that note, we close our discussion like she closes the box. We're gonna take this Blu-ray and we're gonna wrap chain around it uh -huh. and stick it in a vent. Uh -huh. um, but we encourage all of you to watch Wish Upon on your local streaming services such as Pri Amazon Prime or whatever the fuck you can find this on. Uh, we'd like to get this trending to number one <laughs> in the world. Can we do it, the everybody? number one digital rental of the week that we this video it? comes out. Can we do it? Everybody, the... please, go watch Wish Upon. Is that what this really is? Just an experiment to see if you can get something trending? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and not, it is now. I just wanted to talk about Wish Upon because it's awesome. <laughs> but at the same time, why not? I mean, if it's free, right? Yeah, yeah. Get, 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 I'm yeah. assuming it's on one of them for free. This is like Netflix or yeah, it's, it's on just, something. I mean, like, even if you don't watch it, just put it on and like you make dinner or something and get it, get that shit trending. Yeah. Hashtag dumpster daddy. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. oh. I think you'd come up too often, though. <laughs> for dumpster daddy? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It'd be really confusing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>